So as the market shifts and interest rates go up, I am going to get that question, should I sell my house now or should I rent it and wait for a better market? Well, that's always a question. Do you wanna be a landlord or do you wanna be done? I mean, that's really what it is. So I'm gonna go over five things about renting or, or being a landlord as it were. And then I'm gonna talk a little bit about being a seller and then story time, I have my own situation that I'm tell you about from years ago that happened to me when I was trying to decide whether I wanted to sell or rent. Hint, I didn't get a choice. Anyway, renting your home could be a good thing for you. It could be a side hustle for you. I mean, you go and you uh, live in a, a, a better priced area and you keep that higher priced rental here in Santa Cruz and it adds to your bottom line. But there are things to consider when you're thinking about renting your home. First, do you wanna be a landlord? Do you do you wanna do that? Some people are great at it and I applaud them. I, it's not for me, it's not something I really like to do, but you know, some people have just made lifelong friends and family from um, renting, so that might be your thing. Maybe you actually owe just a little too much on it and it doesn't really pencil out to sell right now and so you just wanna rent it or the numbers work. You owe very little on it and the rent would really supplement your income. That's really something that um, I would definitely take a look at, you know, pencil out your numbers. You actually want to hang on to the property for family, maybe to use later. I, I, there's a couple homes in my neighborhood where the people moved out and moved on and they kept that property and their, you know, nieces and nephews uh, rent from them in those homes. You know, a personal attachment to the home. you just, maybe you just want to keep it and see what happens or you just don't think the market's that great and you want to wait. Although I think the market is fabulous. So I mean, you know, selling probably would be okay right now. But anyway, something to keep in mind when you're thinking about renting is um, if you're converting a personal property to a rental would be, are you going to lose your capital gains exclusion? Because remember, you got to live there two of the last five years. And if you can't meet that requirement, you may have a capital gain occurrence. Okay, let's talk about selling. And then I'll tell you my own little story. You might want to sell now because, well, it's a seller's market. You know, it's actually a really good time to get a good price. You don't want to be a landlord. The home needs a lot of work before you could get it ready to be a rental, although there are so many houses in this area that definitely need more work than is being done on them. But, you know, maybe to make it safe, stairs, deck, something just doesn't quite make it rental ready. You can't charge enough rent to actually make the mortgage number work, you know, your your mortgage, your insurance, your uh, property taxes, and maybe any upkeep on the home may make it cost prohibitive to actually do that and selling might be the way out. Then you grab your capital gains tax and you're done. You're moving too far away. You know, when you're not close to your investment, um, it can have things happen that maybe you can't react as quickly to, or your property management company is not on the ball enough to kind of protect your asset as it were. So it's very possible that maybe, maybe renting just isn't for you. It just depends on what you're doing. And then for both sides, if you're going to rent and you're going to sell, you know, that if you want to sell and and you think, well, I don't really have enough to fix it up to get the price that I want. Well, there's other programs that of course we can help you with on that, but that might be a reason that you rent because you actually want to save up to do those repairs to get what you think the house might actually get. Or on the flip side, if you're a renter, if you're renting it, you would want to have at least a month and a half in the bank for the mortgage because there's always one month out of every year. I don't always have a vacancy, but 
it usually works out that something happens that I only lose about 75% of a month each year because there's roommates that come in and out um, of the property. So then I lose a little bit when the roommates shuffle around, but that's something you need to think about is that vacancy rate. And there's repairs, uh, there's unexpected things that come up that you need to have in the bank if you're renting it out. So you may need at least $10,000 just to have tucked aside for any emergencies that may come up. Maybe you don't have that, or maybe you're just not interested in tucking that money aside. And you want to invest in the property that you're going to. So that would be another reason not to rent and to just go ahead and sell. Or the home maybe just isn't a great rental. Maybe it's kind of small and it worked for you, but it, it, it just wouldn't garner. You know, that's a list that I put together that I kind of put. Yeah, but that's not a thing. Rental demand is huge in Santa Cruz. You could do just fine. It just depends on if that's for you. If, do you want to rent it out? Or, um, you know, my own story is our house, our original house that we bought for our family, we bought in 1994. We redid it. We did some really nice finishes, you know, concrete countertops, pecan floors. It was actually really cool. And we decided we wanted to be back on the west side of Santa Cruz because we were living in Live Oak, but we really, really liked this neighborhood better. This is where we grew up and we wanted to kind of come back as it was home. So we bought a fixer upper and oh boy, was it a fixer upper. It needed a foundation. It needed everything. You name it, it needed it. And it still needs some. Anyway, we thought we would live in that house and then we would redo this one and then we would move into this one. Well, if you heard of that little thing called the mortgage meltdown, we actually weren't able to do that because we just couldn't afford to swing all that. We had to have both houses. Either we were living in one or renting the other, but we couldn't swing two mortgages while we were working on one. So we decided to move into the fixer upper because that's where we wanted to land and rent out the other house. And you know, it was fine. We had nice tenants. They took care of the property. But you know, honestly, I one of the reasons I, I'm not crazy about being a landlord is because people kind of do things because it's not their house. So they just don't have that same concern over it. Like they said they weren't going to get pets, but they got pets. They did wreck the floor a little bit. They did fix it. They uh, did take out my flowers that I would have dug up had I known they were going to pull them out. They took out the flowers and got rid of them and left bare dirt because they thought they were weeds. Not sure how that how that works. But anyway, then we thought, well, we'll just sell it, you know, and we, we tried selling it, but the market was too depressed. So we actually got new tenants. Um, the very first tenants, we said, hey, we're going to sell. And they went, oh, no. And they, they just like kind of upped and left. And we went on the market and we couldn't sell. It just, there, it just, it just sat. I mean, the market was depressed and there was no buyers and nobody could qualify for loans. And, you know, it's kind of a mess. So we got another tenant and they were nice people too. We, we liked them. Uh, I actually had kind of met them before and knew that they were good people. So it, you know, it really worked out. Then it came to time where we were just like, okay, we really don't want to be responsible for this property anymore. And we'd like to sell it. And we did sell it. We got a good price, but we did have a capital gained occurrence. We did have to pay taxes on it. Now, we did subtract all the work that we had done on it, but we had to recapture the depreciation. You know, so there's a lot to think about. So maybe if you're thinking of renting, just know that, you know, there's some bookkeeping, there's some tax work, there's some things you're going to need to keep track of versus selling it, writing it off, one and done. So as I say with everything, buying and selling, they're just personal decisions. You can try to time the market. You know, oh, I'm going to sell in a high market. I'm going to wait. You know, some people do, but rarely do I have people do it two and three times a row. Sometimes they just get lucky and then they feel like they know how to do it. But honestly, it's really hard to time the market. Generally, my position has always been do it when it's right for you. Make the decisions on when it's right for you and your family, your pocketbook, your mental space. That's when you decide to rent or sell. So that is my diatribe for today. If you have any questions or comments, please comment below, ask me questions or contact me. My contact's all down there. Subscribe. What else could you do? Share it. <laughs> I hope to talk to you soon. Bye.